Welcome back to the final video of our RTS controls tutorial series. Hopefully you guys have been liking these videos. Feel free to leave a comment on what you'd like to see in future videos. And with that, let's get started. Uh, so as you notice, I have a screen helper. And this screen helper, uh, it just contains some methods and helper textures that will help us draw our screen rect when we drag and select. Um, I will go into in-depth as we start consuming some of these helper functions. Um, so with that, let's go into our player manager and let's... We need a way to let the player manager know if we're dragging or not. Uh, so we'll come down to over here, and um, we do want to we do want to keep select unit if we're hitting the player unit. But if we're hitting ground, we're actually going to change this a little bit. Um, we'll just put else for now, and we're just going to set a new class variable. Bool is dragging equals to false. <clears throat> And we're going to set is dragging equal to true. Um, now, this is basically going to catch anything that's not the player unit. If you have like housing that you want to select, that's going to be another else in this. Um, so this is a way to say anything that shouldn't be selected will turn on dragging and allow dragging. Now, we're going to go up here and above void update, we're going to do an on GUI um, and this this gets called on separate. This allows us to draw to the the GUI. And for now, we're just going to get a rect, and we're going to use our first screen helper class um, at get screen rect. And as you can see, it's going to take a screen position one and screen position two, and that's how we're going to build our rectangle for dragging. So we actually need to store our the last frames mouse position. So another class variable, vector3 mouse position. Um, and so we want to store the mouse position of the previous frame. So mouse position equals input mouse position. Uh, now we can draw a rectangle, uh, or rather get a rectangle. So mouse position and compare that to input mouse position. So our previous mouse position, our final mouse position. And then we want to do another screen helper and draw screen rect. Um, it takes a rectangle and a color. Uh, so we'll want to pass in the rectangle we just made and then for now we'll just do red uh, so it's easy to see. Um, and then the final thing is we only want to do this when we when we're dragging. So if is dragging and execute this code. So once we click play, it should start dragging. Now it doesn't, when we unclick, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> uh, so that takes a little bit of work, but it's drawing rectangles on the screen. So we're looking good. So we're almost there. We just need to fix up the box a little bit and stop dragging when we are when we release the mouse button. So we will just quickly do input get mouse button up and our left mouse button. And for now, um, oh, get mouse button up. <clears throat> and if that, we're just going to set is dragging equal to false. Um, so this should allow us to uh, drag and not have the box follow us everywhere. Um, and lastly, we're going to do another screen helper class, um, and it's draw screen rect border. Um, so this will allow us to draw a border around the thing. So we're going to pass the same rectangle. Uh, for thickness, we'll just start with one, and then for color, we'll do green. So it's easy to see against the red. Um, so we'll go here, and we try that, that's looking good. Um, let's make a quick adjustment to how the box looks. Let's just make like a transparent white, so we'll make a new color here. So instead of the red, we'll just do 0.8F, 0.8F, 0.95F, 95F, 
and 0 0.1. Uh, <laughs> and that'll get a nice white transparent, and we can probably just name that white. Well, let's do it blue, so it looks nice and cool. Awesome, so looking really good. Um, can test that a little bit more. Every corner works, the rectangle is being built appropriately. So now we can actually begin our selection. <laughs> so we'll go down here and in the guess, get mouse button up, this is where when we release the mouse button, we want to check if everyone underneath uh, is a selectable unit and then uh, consequently select them. So we're actually going to get a helper function. Um, private void is within selection bounds and that's going to take in a transform. So for this <coughs> we're going to grab the camera, camera and we only have one camera so we're just going to grab the main camera in the scene. Uh, grab the view port bounds and this is we're going to use a screen helper again screen helper and the me the method is going to be get viewport bounds <laughs> and this takes a camera and two vectors screen position 1 and screen position 2 so very similar to how we built the rectangle drawing on the GUI uh, so pass in our camera screen position 1 which is mouse position and input get Oh, input mouse position. <laughs> and then finally, we're just going to return view port bounds contains, uh, because screen helper get view port bounds returns a, a bounds object, and there's a Unity helper class that has this contains, and then we can just do, <laughs> well, if we just do transform position, that actually wouldn't work because uh, the position of our unit is in the game space and we need to cast that to the viewport space where the camera and the GUIs are being drawn. So we're going to actually grab the camera and then do world to viewport port. And then we can pass in our transform position. Position. <laughs> and we should be good to go here. Uh, oh, we want to return bool, not void. Uh, and then the final thing is we actually want to just return if we're not dragging. Uh, there's no reason to check anything if we're not dragging. So return false. Okay, cool. So all we have to do is use that in the get mouse button up <coughs> method. So now we want to grab all the units that are in the field. Um, so I'm, the way I'm going to write this is not going to be optimized, um, this for each loop, but um, normally in a real game you'll <coughs> you'll already know the units that are spawned, and you can iterate through those lists. But for now, we're just going to do selectable object <coughs> in find objects of type, and we'll just use box collider because we know our test units have... <coughs> have box colliders and we can easily iterate them. So we'll do if is within selection bounds and we're going to pass in the selectable objects transform. And if it is within the bounds then we can use our select unit method. And we'll just pass in that selectable object, the transform of it, and uh, dragging will most likely be multi-select so we'll set that to true. <laughs> All right, so that's looking good. Um, and then we actually, before we start this, we probably we probably want to deselect units before we start this process so that everyone doesn't get uh, stay selected. And then we'll test that, and hopefully this will work. So I hover over these two, and it looks like they're getting selected. And I hover over these two, and this got deselected, and these two got selected. So it actually works. Thank you guys for watching this video series. Um, in the next ones, hopefully we can start handling movements, combat, um, flashes when enemies get attacked, all that good stuff.